Uh, the same idea, we um, looked at something similar. But uh, let's do that because it's natural log of x minus 3. So remember, we talked about this. I'm going to graph it again. This is the graph of natural log. Domain greater than 0. Vertical asymptote. And x must be greater than 0. So we are asked to find the domain and graph this function. Can anyone tell us what to write in order to find the domain? Yes, x minus 3 has to be greater than 0 or x greater than 3, so the domain is 3 to infinity. So now let's graph. Now remember when we graph, when we shift the function that has a vertical asymptote and we shift it left and right. If we shift it up and down and has a vertical asymptote, nothing changes. But if we shift the, the graph left and right and it has a vertical asymptote, what do I have to shift first? And the answer is... The vertical asymptote, where does it move? It's at x equals 0 now. Where will it move? Makes sense. Oops, to the right, of course. 1, 2, 3. It makes sense, sense, right? Because we already know the domain. So we shouldn't be surprised that it has to go to the, left, to the right. So then this point will move where? 2, 4. Perfect. That's the graph. So natural log of x minus 3. So a domain we have, what about range? Right. Good. So, yes. Any questions, please? Anything? I would like us to uh, look at the next problem, even if you say no. So um, I'm not going to show it to you. I'm gonna, just going to copy it. I'm going to show it to you, of course. So it's a piecewise defined function. But I'm going to make a little change here. So 1 minus x squared. And when I give you the copy, I uh, will have the change. Let me do this because I may forget what the change is. I don't think so, but let me write it. Okay, so uh, this is a piecewise defined function. A piecewise defined function can have two branches or three branches or infinitely many branches. Um, do we know an application of this in, from real life situation? Thank you. I'm just going to say April 15th. <laughs> and ask you what it was. Of course. So, as an example, I don't know the numbers and the, the, the uh, uh, brackets, uh, but I'm telling you this. Let's say I'm making stuff up. Between 0 and 20,000, 1%. Between 20,000 and 50,000, 2%. Between 50,000 and 100,000, 3%. That's what it means. So, on a particular piece of the domain, a function. On another piece of the domain, a totally different function. On another piece of the domain, a different function. That's all it means. So, how do we start? We always start with what when we are asked to graph a function? The first thought is what? Excellent. Please remember that. So what I recommend, again, if you have a different method that works, that's fine. What I recommend is change this into an interval notation. And you will say, I hope, this. Agreed? You will change this into, I hope, 0 to infinity. Agreed? And now, I think, for my purpose, you'll see what happens next. Um, you don't have to look here, you can look here, or you can look here and tell me the domain of f. I don't care about the domain of this piece. I don't care about the domain of this piece. I care about the domain of function f. And what would that be? 
Indeed, I have everything to the left of zero, I have zero, and I have everything to the right of zero, so it must be negative infinity to infinity. Acceptable? Okay, perfect. So now, yes, I know me and my tables. Which is a key point here? which would have been in the table no matter what, but this time is a key point because the function f changes from one function to another function at zero. Zero must be in the table. It would have been in the table no matter what. But here's what I recommend next. See this symbol, a bracket facing left, and this symbol, which is a parenthesis facing right? These will be the symbols right immediately exactly under zero touching each other. A left bracket and a right parenthesis. Okay, what will you say, which function will I have to use between negative infinity and zero? Yes, I know it's an overkill, but sometimes these functions will intentionally not be given in the correct order. I know that this is a silly question. Which function I use from 0 to infinity? There are only two branches, so obviously it must be negative 2x minus 3. Okay, what type of function is this? Careful, it, the variable is not at the exponent. Say it again. <laughs> right? <laughs> because it has x squared. So these are the options for something with x squared. Either with a positive leading coefficient, positive leading coefficient, or with a negative leading coefficient. OK, perfect. Keep that in mind. So I'm going to pick some numbers, some x values. I'm going to pick, of course, um, negative 1 and uh, maybe even negative 2. Let's say negative 2, negative 1, and 0. So please plug in negative 2 and tell me what you get. Perfect. Please plug in negative 1 and tell me what you get. Excellent. Please plug in 0 and tell me what you get inside the bracket. 1, right? You agree with 1? 1 minus 0, 1? Good. So now I would like you to plug in 0 on the other side. And you should be appalled. Because I'm not allowed to plug in 0 here. 0 is here. It cannot be here. If it's in both, it's not a function. So, but bear with me and say negative 3, which you already said, and put it inside the parenthesis. Let's also use 1. Please plug in 1 and tell me what you get. Perfect. Okay, stay with me. Let's graph this. From left to right, please give me the first ordered pair. The first order pair is excellent. Got it. Next order pair. Got it. And good. Is this a full point or an open point? Very good. Remember, it's quadratic. It has a maximum. It's x squared, negative x squared, up 1. But only to the right and to your left hand side of uh, 0. OK, uh, the next order pair, please. Full or open? Awesome. That's why I'm using these symbols. This to signify a full point, and this to signify an open point. You don't have to use this. If it makes sense to you, please do. Good. And then I have 1, negative 5. 
which is this, and we are done. So this is function f of x. We have the domain all real numbers. Can anyone give us the range of this function? Maybe it will be from the lowest y value till the largest y value, which is one. Excellent. Negative infinity, one. We are going to use this a lot. Chapter two, when we determine limits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Any questions on this? Yes, yes. So um, when we get to These are the piecewise defined functions in which we're asked to find where the limit, blah, blah, blah. This is a piecewise defined function. As you see, between the infinity, um, let me uh, zoom in. So this is another piecewise defined function. A patient receives 150 milligram injection, injection of a drug every four hours. Okay, so he, he gets the... Um, injection right here at zero. And then in the bloodstream, uh, the concentration of the medicine decreases. Four hours later, he gets another shot. So all of a sudden, he gets a lot of um, medication in his system. Then it decreases in the next four hours. And then he gets another one. And then he gets another one, and so on and so forth. So this is an example of a piecewise defined function. This is an example of a piecewise defined function. This is an example of a piecewise defined function. This is an example of a piecewise defined function. This is an example of a piecewise defined function. This is an example of a piecewise defined function. And all of them are piecewise defined functions. Any questions? OK, so this was a, is another piecewise defined function. They are all over. They're all over. OK, good. Uh, going back. Any questions? Any questions? OK, I know we have five minutes left. So uh, let's analyze either 10 or 11, and then we can stop. Don't forget to give me the intro before you leave, so I don't want to forget. OK, so um, this is a very important topic because um, of uh, the chain rule. So when we get to the chain rule, when we have a function inside a function, I'll show you how to differentiate that. That's for later. So we need to identify the inner function and the outer function. So this is an example in which we are asked to decompose the function into inner and outer. Here we are given two functions, and we are asked to find f comma g and then g comma f. So, which one would you like to work on tonight before we adjourn? A piecewise defined function. They're both piecewise defined functions. Do we, would we like to talk about decomposing this or composing that? Composing. composing? Yes. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, so let's look at composing first, which makes sense to compose first and then decompose. Okay, so we have two functions. We have f of x, which is 2x minus 5, and g of x, which is negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. And I said in there uh, f come g, but I also want g come f. Now I'm going to start with g come f. And then we can do the other one next time. I don't want to hold you over. Because I know it's a lot and it's freezing in here for you. I don't know what ha what's happening. So by definition, this is g of f of x. I start with the inner function. You don't have to cross it out like that. And I replace it by 2x minus 5. So g of 2x minus 5. Now, I need to analyze these two functions with you. This is very important. What does f of x mean? This is what f of x means. What does g of x mean? This is what g of x means.
that's the pattern. This is what I see. So if you ask me to plug in g, 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5, because that's the pattern. Is that clear? When I look at this function, I see negative 3 times whatever squared minus 2 times whatever plus 4. Negative 3 times whatever squared minus 2 times whatever plus 4. So then g of 2x minus 5 will be negative 3 2x minus 5 squared minus 2 2x minus 5 plus 4. What do I start with? What is my first thought? Yes. We discussed that today. We're not going to FOIL unless you insist, and I, have, I, I can change that. But can anyone give us 2x minus 5, everything squared? So minus 2 times the first times the second, right? So minus 20x plus 25, a binomial squared. A trinomial minus 4x plus 10 and plus 4 and this becomes negative 12x squared plus 60x minus 75 minus 4x and plus 14 I have one more step plus 56x and minus 61 this is the function composition 